So, uh, the customary uh, good evening, rather very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, those on the screen and uh, those not on the screen. Uh, sincere gratitude to SHM and FFI for getting this quorum together. Uh, and of course, uh, this quorum is to talk about the new normal as far as entertain, entertainment is concerned. Uh, I, I would first invite uh, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani to uh, set the ball rolling for all of us and uh, then we go by the order which we had set for ourselves and I'll do a small introduction then. Uh, in between, if there's a very compelling point which someone wants to put, please raise the finger and uh, can can interject. Uh, Doc Saab, over to you. Thank you so much for helping us at all rolling in a short time. Uh, there you go, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul. I'm uh, really happy to be here this afternoon with the on the joint auspices of uh, ASOCHAM and FFI. Really uh, grateful uh, to the president. Fitos Hassel, uh, thank you very much for being uh, partnering with us. Uh, thank you, Raul, uh, wonderful director. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Charaji, uh, Prosanjit. It's nice to have you over here. Of course, we have the beautiful Ms. Shobna. Thank you for being here with us today, Senpil uh, of Cube Cinema. Uh, Salone, I can't see you, but I presume you're here. Uh, and uh, Raul Nera. Uh, thank you very much to all for being over here today. Very challenging times and something which is uh, extremely upsetting when I hear the news and see the news as to what is happening with this coronavirus. Most of all, I feel very upset about the migrant workers. I mean, these people in thousands, in lakhs, in millions maybe, going and walking 1,000 kilometers, 1,500 kilometers to go back home. You have trains lying in the yards. You have buses in the ST depots. And all these people are still walking to go back home. I mean, it's almost like 1947. I wasn't born then. But nevertheless, I heard about it and stuff like that. Never thought that in a democratic country like India, we would have to have this kind of thing. But coronavirus is a paradigm something which absolutely destabilized everybody. It's the, it took strong action of our prime minister to begin with it, but later on, I don't know what went wrong. Lots of positive efforts have been made, both by the government at the state and the center, and all the other people have cooperated, some more and some less. Our industry, the film industry, and the hotel industry, the restaurant business, have been hugely affected. What a contradiction in terms. Contradiction because people are being entertained every day through the internet, through the TV media, and still the industry is suffering. I think this is an issue that we need to address today. And I'm very happy that we are now going to discuss the new normal today the challenges of the new normal, which is going to affect not only the entertainment industry, but all industries. Every single business is going to be affected. Never ever dreamt that we would be on a webinar to have a conference or discussion like this. But this is the new reality. And we will all have to face this new reality for some time, at least, till a vaccine now found out. However, Let's get down to the new normal that we talk about and hear from all the experts over here today in order to share with each other what this needs to be done. I think uh, the Film Federation really has taken a good role in order to put all these things. And if you can actually document what the film industry needs in terms of help from the government, ASUCHAM is ready to represent you and the entire industry to the government as we are always doing for all sectors of the society 
We have had interactions with the Prime Minister, his office, the Finance Minister, various people from INP and other uh, government agencies, the Reserve Bank of India Governor. All these agencies have interacted with uh, ASOCHAM on a continuing basis. I myself have had several such interactions. We've also been interacting with the media in order to inform them as to the needs of all types of industry. And we will be very happy to see to it that we can partner with you in a more proactive sort of way. Once we understand what are the needs of industry, what is it that we can really do to help industry to take it to the next level? But we do understand that this change and this lockdown was necessary. So we are fully cooperating with the government in the lockdown issues. We're not happy with all the things that are happening, including the migratory labor. We are really upset about those type of things and maybe of certain other things too. But nevertheless, I think all in all, the government has been very proactive in order to take a fast decision to lock down in order to see that the number of deaths which took place in other countries of the world did not take place in India. So we are blessed with a good leadership in our country. I'm so glad that we are here today and really ASOCHAM would like to partner with you in a much stronger way in the future with the FFI in order to say that not only this program, but what else can we do together in order to furtherance the requirements of industry? What is it that we can play a greater role in terms of doing it and maybe doing on a regular basis? So welcome all of you to this seminar and please roll out because you are the best persons who can tell us what the needs of industry are and what the new normal will be in future. Thank you very much, everybody, and most welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for your uh, wise and kind words. Uh, mm. I really appreciate that. And uh, we'll take up on the offer of following this with a paper and with the states and with the center to take uh, this to a logical conclu conclusion. And I'm more than happy to play executive assistant to all of you in this journey. Uh, Film Federation of India started in 1952, for those who don't know. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Film Federation of India, for those who would not know, was started in 1952. 18,000 producers are a part of it. 20,000 distributors have been a part of it. And 12,000 exhibitors are a part of it. And in more ways, more ways than one, it is the Sutradhar for the whole cinema industry. And it's presided over by Firdal Sab. Uh, so over to you uh, to set the ball rolling for uh, the industry. Uh, thank you, sir. Please. Uh, can you hear me now? <clears throat> we can all hear you. Yeah. Uh, very good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, and. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizer, organizer, Associam and uh, Rahul Nara, who is like a younger brother to me. And once again, uh, thanks for inviting Film Federation of India and making us a, a part of this event. Uh, to tell about myself, I am by profession, I am a film producer, businessman, and I am into film by out of passion uh, because I believe that. Uh, film is a passion driven profession. So uh, just to start with, Mr. Dr. Niranjan has just told that challenges and everything is uh, with our film industry. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, these challenges are not what is now is not a new thing uh, to the film industry. Uh, the film industry's first challenge uh, was the day uh, um, uh, television was introduced to our life way back in the 70s or maybe late 60s. The time when television was introduced, uh, film industry thought that uh, we got a competitor. Maybe a few portion of our audience will be divided and they will be uh, in their house watching television. Uh, but on the other hand, we got a new uh, life. The old films got a new piece of life. The old the Durdarshan started purchasing the old films. 
slowly slowly uh, durdarshan started uh, producing fictional non fictional uh, program people a uh, lot of technicians getting involved a lot of assistant director director they are getting a job parallel industry uh, started coming up after that in the late 80s we have seen the rise of uh, video vcr and with that came the biggest threat of the film industry uh, that is piracy you all uh, must agree that at that time uh, many many uh, producer is to sell their movie directly to the uh, vcr video companies and and in friday when the film is get uh, used to release the same day uh, the cassettes were available in the market you can you can see and they used to give the cassette in hourly basis the big films every films all the films were available that time and in the 90s also if you are aware uh, i think that time this culture of video hall came up and there was at one point of time there was more video hall than cinema halls but uh, on the other hand that time producer started uh, selling video right they used to uh, they started a new way of uh, earning uh, money from for their uh, recovering money for their film then came satellite uh, with satellite again the uh, other industry like the television the fiction non fiction this industry started growing and now after satellite uh, we are facing this new uh, ott things and set uh, internet uh, the piracy in the form of uh, youtube pictures are loaded in the youtube so these are the all things are happening from decades and still uh, the good thing was that uh, apart for all these challenges our industry uh, is growing we had a growth of uh, we, we had a steady growth in the last 3 4 years and apart from the growth there is a curiosity there is a awareness Uh, there is a want in 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 the youth in the students uh, if you have noticed that earlier uh, there was only uh, one institute which we used to call the uh, pune film institute but now lot of colleges a uh, lot of universities uh, they are offering uh, mass communication uh, with film studies uh, with videography and students are coming up uh, students are getting interested in it the thing that i what i was focusing on that uh, apart from all these challenges still uh, uh, before this uh, covid 19 we had a very 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 steady growth maybe we used to uh, count our uh, success of the film through days earlier we used to count that silver jubilee means 25 week and uh, now we count our success on 25 days uh, we 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 count our film by number of shows 20 24 shows the star they compete with each other in how many shows the multiplex are giving us so things have changed but there is a, a, there was a rapid uh, growth but now uh, all of a sudden this uh, corona corona virus this covid 19 came into our life uh, not only in india but uh, it is a pandemic it's uh, all over the world and uh, not only the film industry at particular but all the industry uh, is facing a lot of a uh, lot of problem and we actually we don't know we we, we don't know what will happen we are, we are, we are uh, totally in the dark uh, we don't know when the uh, halls will uh, be open and what will be the uh, ways uh, what will be the uh, scenario and what will the process by which audience will come whether audience will come or not uh, whether big films will be released or not so i think at this juncture uh, it is very difficult for us to uh, go for the go for a complete solution it is not possible to go for a complete solution the best we can we can go for some best solution or uh, maybe a partial partial solution the last few days you all may be watching that uh, this uh, some producer are uh, selling their movies in ott channel uh, some multiplexes are writing letter uh, this uh, things is going on but i think that uh, both are right from their own stand uh, today a lot of producer especially the small producers uh, they uh, produce their film uh, taking a loan taking finance uh, from lot of financer with high interest and it is for difficult for them to hold the film when they are getting a chance to uh, sell the film in the ott platform they want to realize their money they want to uh, give back their money to the uh, producers and start a new film but uh, we cannot survive we uh, we cannot the film industry cannot survive only depending on uh, ott and satellite because uh, in a year there are few films that earn a revenue of 200 300 crores 
uh, that is only possible if we have a theoretical release because ott uh, platform uh, maximum maximum producers uh, who can who are able to uh, sell their film in the ott platform can only recover a 20 to 25 percent of their cost not more than more than that and also larger films uh, larger films mean the films uh, that are made of a budget of 100 crores uh, that films can only be uh, that money can be uh, realized only through uh, domestic and as well as uh, overseas theatrical release and also if you have noticed that there is a trend now that most of our uh, big actor big actor or star so called star uh, they are all have become a producers now either they are co-producing film or they are producing in their own banner and for them i think selling a picture in a, a ott platform uh, is is uh, they is just uh, like uh, they they won't do it because it will it will they have a brand value uh, they don't <laughs> want to spoil their brand value i think selling uh, a <laughs> film like star like prasenjit da is there uh, <laughs> like the khans another thing uh, selling uh, uh, making a film and selling it to only ott film uh, it will not do justice for their stardom it is a, on the other hand it may be it may be easier it may be easier for small producer that i told you uh, for them it is easier to uh, sell their film in the ott platform and also uh, movies with large set with extravaganza with fight sequence with like film like avengers akbar yoda akbar all this film this content is only meant for cinema it's a cinema consumption movies so these 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 movies only can be enjoyed by the audience in the big screen and also there is one one more market the market this is a large we have a big untapped opportunity for original dub content to be released to release in hindi language that too uh, can boost a uh, big uh, big collection in the box office and i believe that uh, you know theater will be never short of content because if you see uh, in india is india is one of the largest film producing company uh, film producing country sorry in the world uh, on an average uh, 2500 2600 uh, 2600 films are produced in a year out of that 2000 plus movies are uh, i think censored and 1500 uh, movies are released uh, out of that around 350 to 400 films are uh, hindi films rest are regional film and instead of this there are also 20 to 25 percent of film that doesn't get a chance to doesn't get chance in the hall they doesn't get a programming they doesn't get theaters we you all know that at present we have 6300 uh, single screen and around 2500 uh, multiplexes so it's uh, nearly 8 8000 uh, 8500 uh, 8, to 9000 screens we have uh, whereas we should we should this is also is our work we should uh, promote this and take the presence of screen at least uh, 25 to 30000 in all over india according according to a survey it was told that uh, the population and the area india has there should be uh, 30000 cinema halls uh, all over uh, all over india and and i i always advocated and i i always believe that uh, movie is uh, going to a hall and watching a movie is a community activity and that should be promoted more uh, promoted because in in today's world we are we are lacking in that thing uh, watching a film in a uh, mobile or a ott platform is always an individual activity uh, i think that uh, community activity should be promoted and that can be done only uh, going going to the theater hall another area that i i want to uh, bring to your notice is that we have a, a large number of uh, daily wage workers in our film industry basically if you see that we have uh, six places where uh, our industry or we have organized film industry that is four in the south uh, that is karnataka tamil nadu hyderabad and chennai and uh, in mumbai where where we have uh, hindi film market bhojpuri gujarati and marathi and in bengal so there is a huge in this six place there is a huge number of daily wage worker uh, who are who are ignored basically uh, very uh, they are not ignored they are not been recognized if you uh, you all know that uh, we we are though we are uh, brand as a uh, sin industry we are called as a sin industry but uh, we are one of the highest revenue earner for the government 
government uh, gets a lot of revenue and tax from us and i don't know how much percent of that had been are being used for the development of the film industry it had been most of the money that is earned from the film industry are used in a different uh, different other purposes and today if we are trying we are saying that farmers are dying people are committing suicide the government is saying that we should do for the farmers we should give them cash money everything but uh, i say you friends that in our film industry we have lot of daily worker we have even producers we have even actors who are in a very very bad shape in misery in pain they have no work because the only work they know is film and today they are in very very bad condition whatever is done uh, for them is done from the uh, from by the industry people nothing had been done from the government because whatever uh, we give uh, we want the government should do something for the film industry from our money we are not telling the government to invest money from from their uh, treasury uh, but what money they are collecting from us in the form of tax certain percent should be used otherwise our our position will become like doordarshan you know doordarshan at one time was was the biggest uh, revenue earner but uh, whatever money they collected from doordarshan they never invested in doordarshan and so what happened when satellite channel private satellite channel came they were unable to compete with them today uh, we film makers we used to make film that today if my film is good if i get a award or if i am selected in a panorama uh, i have uh, doordarshan will buy my film but for but for the last 10 years uh, doordarshan is not buying any film so winning a national award or uh, getting a getting your film in the panorama uh, we have just a certificate from the government was nothing nothing more than that but still uh, i like to say that uh, 90% of the film of our film fails in the box office but still the industry is not shutting down this is the beauty of our film industry that 90% of our film fails in the box office but still we are running the industry and uh, film federation uh, always try to educate the officers the ministers and we play as a bridge between the industry Uh, and the government and it is our duty to work for the betterment of the industry but it is only possible uh, when we speaks in one voice maybe maybe we have different languages but there should be uh, one voice and one agenda uh, that is uh, betterment of the film thank you thank you uh thank you so much firdaus sir uh, welcome senthil sir how are you uh so just wanted to add one thing uh pidol sahab said that the actual market size is about 30000 screens uh may just be worthwhile to add that the uh, jadoos is trying to see if it can do a 25 site pilot with the msme policy which has just been introduced by the honorable prime minister to make open air theaters uh but first day for show capable uh and then see how that goes probably it will help in employment it will help in doing a pilot to expand across the villages which today stands totally untapped uh 50 crore people probably have not seen a movie in their entire lives and they lie in the uh, rural diaspora uh so we were talking of challenges and uh between with us we have someone who made yodha and made arjun right rahul sir and uh, i would understand in these times of covid you need a lot of yodhas and probably a lot of arjuns to uh, carry this fight this battle over to you sir uh thank you rahul i sent him for a long time I want to thank Mr. Iran Nandani, but he is not here. Also, Mr. Hassan, what you said. I think uh, where we are leading to is uh, is a new order as far as filmmaking goes. You know, I've been born in the. Uh, my father was a filmmaker himself, so since I was born, I've been uh, hearing about the industry very much. I think Prasenji is also has been through the similar kind of experience, and uh, every four or five years, I used to hear a sentence saying that this is the last year of 
the industry and the industry is closing down well uh, it's been 67 years to me since i've been born but the industry is still very much there it hasn't gone anywhere and still is going to be there challenges will keep coming i think now with this new order which we're going to see which has happened because of covid it, it's thrown everything out of gear completely and uh, the ott platforms uh, have taken out there and uh, there is this fear that uh, you know the theatrical business will get ruined because of the ott's now i don't believe that i believe that an experience a cinematic experience what you enjoy in the theater is something which cannot be paralleled on an ott or on uh, the satellites so that's a, a different experience watching a film which is made for the theater what i i i presume what will happen is that we will definitely have films which are made for a theatrical experience there will be another order which will be films made for the OTTs. You know, there actually they are two different genres completely. If you're going to make a film for the OTT, it's got to be shot in its own way. You know, everything moves according to the genre we are moving into. Right now, what is coming on the OTTs are there are some very good shows which are coming from all over the country you know, and uh, they're really doing well but unfortunately there have been some films which have released on the OTs prior to the covid were also films which were not finding a theatrical release right so they were coming onto the OTs. today the producers who are coming onto the ott are producers who have no choice so they have come into they've come into severe stress which is natural you know they have interest they have lots of uh, uh, stuff that they have to get over and for them to get over it is the ott i'm sure that most of them must not be liking the idea of doing it but they they are forced to do it because they have uh, you know financial uh, constraints and stuff like that now, what's happening with the feature films is that um, the stars who uh, who actually uh, form uh, you know form a large part of the entertainment industry are the stars. Now here we we, we have a star with us, Prasenjit is here, who's a huge star in in Bengal, and um, you know uh, they I'm sure even Prasenjit uh, as an individual and for the kind of work he does he would prefer working for the big screen if somebody came to him for film for the ott i think he would accept it provided it was a film being made for the ott you know which is not happening so i think an order will come up now where you will find uh, producers you'll find directors you'll find technicians you'll find actors or who are you know wanting to go specifically for the OTTs, you will also have a set of new talent coming in as far as actors go. You know, today the television industry has brought so many popular names on TV. I I, I don't watch them, but I I, I do realize that there are lots of stars on TV. I'm sure there are lots of stars on OTT, but what is going to stay the theater will always be there you know that i think will always stay with that experience is a different experience and the ott is not the end of it you know with technology going <clears throat> something else will keep coming in we'll constantly have to reinvent ourselves into this uh, the only uh, uh, side i see which has been a little uh, you know, which would be good for the industry uh, is, uh, I think, Mr. Hassan would, uh, you know, we have been running, uh, producers have been running through a very tough time with the multiplex owners. I'm being very candid, very honest. You know, the multiplexes 
have been treating the producers, not you're not treating the producers as your partner. You know, it's very much part of your, your whole business run because of the producer. You have been exercising, you know, a lot of um, high handedness as far as the producer goes. You release a film, firstly, you pick out a film which you want. You know, there's no choice that the producer has. You release it in whatever shows you want to release. You remove it from a theater whenever you want it or want to remove it. You charge exorbitant monies. I'm not complaining about you charging for the uh, concessionaries and all that, that's fine. But you charge exorbitant amount of money. You have exorbitant ticket bids. You take a lion's share of that money, right? In the first week, you pay 50% to the producer. In the second week, 45%. And from the third week onwards, you are paying 35% of the producer. So, you know, you are taking over a lion's share and you've always been dealing with an upper. I think, you know, now it's a time where uh, they are finally, you know, they, they've been saying now, we are requesting producers not to go the OTT way. That's fine. You know, even the producer does not want to go the OTT way. But I think we really need to sit down. We need to sort out our terms with each other in a better way because we've got to hold each other's hands to really get there. You know, it's very unfortunate that we don't hold each other's hands and the multiplexers decide what they want to do. This is purely my, my feeling, and um, I'm glad that uh, Dr. Ikanzai said that uh, he would be happy to take uh, whatever problems the industry's got ahead to the uh, uh, to Delhi and uh, you know get things cleared and to help the industry out. I'm sure Mr. Hassan would uh, really be able to work on that. And also, you know, more theaters is what we need. We definitely need more theaters also. And theaters which are made reasonable for people to watch. You know, there, there is a money cost to everything. So there, I think smaller theaters in other uh, smaller areas <clears throat> it would be a very, very good venture. Now, I've been to Kajurao for a film festival. And uh, I was surprised that Kajurao does not have a single cinema film. Anybody who wants to see a film in Kajurao I have to drive down about uh, 60 kilometers away to see a cinema hall. So in Kajurao, during the festival, you have these little, little uh, tents kind of things put up, you know, with uh, projectors. And there's a huge crowd of people wanting to watch them. I think the cinema can really progress in a big way. And also today, the uh, things like we spoke about the regional cinema. You know, I, I think that's all nonsense. You know, there is no regional cinema anymore. It's all Indian cinema. The kind of films I've been watching over the last couple of years, you know, I think um, what I've been watching in Bengali or in uh, Canaries or in Malayalam, you know, I, I think somewhere, uh, you know, we need to hang our heads you know, in shame from Hindi cinema because these guys are doing a far better job than we are. Let's be honest about it. So the cinema movement will carry on, will be there. We we'll try and make they we'll try and make it more uh, easier for people to watch. And uh, the OTTs will also be a new. It'll be a new form of filmmaking. It won't be called filmmaking, but it's the same. It's the same thing, but in a different format. And that's what I see the future actually getting to. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, awesomely said that these are there's another window which has come which will have a different gene to itself. And uh, at this juncture, I'd request Prasanjit's uh, 350 films. Sir, if I'm not wrong, uh, started with Choto Jigyaso and the last one was Robi Bar. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt. So you're you're I'm sorry to interrupt, Prasenjit. You've done 300 films. 
no no more than 400 plus this completely is nearing toward 500 i go for nearing toward 500 now i'm sorry i am just deviating a little bit this is a really uh, something which i i can't imagine and he's really young he's got so many years ahead i think by the time uh, he finishes his career he'll probably have done something like 3000 4000 films I don't you know, know. <laughs> he will he will be like our second I've, sir i've been seeing him in diverse films and diverse characters diverse roles you know and uh, i've already told him at the festival that i meet him and uh, this reminds me, sorry, I'm just deviating, but um, uh, there were these uh, writers in the South. They were called the Parafuri Brothers. And Mr. Amanadu, who was a very prominent producer, he was making a film with the Parafuri Brothers. I met him there. And uh, there were two of them that wrote together. And um, I said, uh, you know, how many films have you done? On? So they said, uh, we've done 250 pictures. So I said, as writers, you've written 250 films. And Mr. Naidu said, sir, they're very lazy. That's why they've written only 250 films. <laughs> so if they were active, I think Mr. Naidu expected them to write about a thousand films. Or something. But personally, I'm really very impressed with you. I want Thank to be Thank you. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, yeah, uh, in fact, uh, thank you, Raulji, and uh, to organize this uh, uh, meeting, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining this. Uh, well, I think all the senior people and the expertise people from uh, Firdos to Raulji, everybody said, uh, and those are the real facts and figure. But what I really need to say, uh, I, I need to start from a different angle. Uh, in fact, last five, six years back, when I used to, you know, or go to some of the seminars. Uh, I don't know when I used to always say one thing that uh, now the time is going to change. So we need to say that uh, we normally we say that we are film producer or we say we are television software producer. I used to always say that uh, we need to say that we are content provider. Uh, this I was I, I started saying it from last four or five years because I believe that there are a lot of screen which had come and those are important and uh, we need to see that we make good content. It's for uh, maybe uh, for a big screen, maybe for television or maybe for OTT platform or maybe even for a small film, short film for uh, your uh, uh, mobile phone. So there are a lot of screen coming up. So, but today when we are discussing, we are all sitting uh, in a lockdown situation. And today we have to understand that the producers who are spending a lot of money and when a producer spends money, uh, it is a huge numbers of technicians to actors, not only technicians and actors, I'm talking about the theaters to the, and a lot of people are, if I talk about a regional industry, I know there are thousands and thousands of people are, uh, it's like a chain. It's just like a chain. It's all over India. So I think we need to first see that and we need to understand. Uh, that's my, a bit of experience working in this industry for last, uh, yeah, 30 years. That we need to first see that how our producer at least can come to a break even. That's how we operated. Rahulji, you must be knowing when a film gets an actors, we we say that okay, let us stand beside the producer. Let us see if he has lost the money, if he can, you know, do something else to get back his money. That's the way this industry has been, you know, moving. That Kisika loss ho gaya, so we need to stand beside them. Today also, I think the time has come that we need to see that how a producer can at least come up to a position that he can think about starting something new. So I don't want to, you know, say that television or OTT platform or cinema has been facing these challenges from years. Even uh, I think uh, Pidozji also said the same thing. When Durudarshan came, 
when uh, the home theaters came, when this video came, uh, then the cable operator came. Always it has been a threat that people are not going to go to the theaters. But I'm sure theater has its own magic. It's a time now we all are sitting and we are discussing, which is not a very right time, very good time. We all know we are going to face, especially I'm talking about entertainment industry because the kind of work we do when we create our content we need a lot of people we can't do like two or three or five people it has to be a, a at least 40 50 people on the set and the our consumer is also that when we get a house full then where the money comes so both ways there are a lot of people is needed to make the content and of course to market it and then to go to the consumer so in this case right now the place where we are sitting is a really a tough time honestly even if you somebody asked me what is the remedy i don't think so none of us can say uh, right now sitting here that what is the remedy we can't see any remedy but we need to find out and uh, my way of thinking is that I had faced it in my own region and, and as uh, Firdos is one of the very important producer from Calcutta also. There are a lot of good films happens, you know, which Rahul Ji was also saying. Sometime when it gets released, uh, when a big film comes, they hardly get any show timing. And some, it needs a little time to get that mouth publicity and, you know, so that space is also not there. Finally, this film is watched maybe in later in an OTT platform where huge number of people are watching it, appreciating it. They're putting it into the social media, but in theaters, because it can't be kept, there are a lot of pressure on the theaters, especially I'm talking about uh, multiplexes. When we used to do films, we used to depend mainly on single screen. And we used to always say it's a mouth publicity, which was very important that time. People came out from the theater and say, a oh, badiya picture, it's a fantastic film. So people used to, you know, the, then the box office used to increase. Now that it's like a one day. We have to see that within first week, your, mm, your target has to be this. In second week, your target has to be this. Sometime for a, for a maybe a non-big star cast, always it is not possible then your option becomes other option which is good which is television of course which is which was also uh, television now it is ott platform and let me be very honest in terms of a production producer when we we do a budget of a firm with any kind of a star we always take in the budget the recovery budget satellite rights it's in the budget uh, we always count OTT platform today's day. So that is also, we say that this is also a budget. And then we come to the theatrical and when the box office becomes big, then it, the film becomes really big. So I think everything is uh, connected. So now uh, in recent past, I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, controversial thing happening, but I think it is, we need multiplexes, we need theaters and cinema is going to remain um, as it was always. But now I think it is a, one very important thing which i really need to say to all of you uh we all produce uh, the original industry hindi film tamil telugu marathi but we finally produce indian cinema i think in this lockdown i don't know how it is possible but if we can create a body which we say that it is an indian cinema body it's a family because now, if we don't stand, whether it is a producer, whether it's an exhibitor, whether it's an actor, actress, whatever, all F directors, all need to come and, you know, format a very reasonably good body who are very much senior to us, some senior people from different region. And they say that we are here to, you know, think about the entire film industry of Indian cinema. There has to be a a big platform to support us to guide us basically and talk on behalf of us there are a lot of bodies we know we have bombay in kolkata we have in everybody there are a lot of 
bodies are there. But I think this is a high time if we can get an uh, Indian cinema body right now to fight this corona and this situation, whose guideline can be, yeah, I mean, everybody has to, you know, see and listen to them. It's a very important thing right now. That That's my uh, uh, kind of a vision I have now, if we can create it. Otherwise, uh, yes, uh, it is a very tough time and uh, we need to fight back and we need to keep our patience because uh, if tomorrow we start our film shoot, there are, we can't shoot. I mean, people are saying a lot of things. They, people are making a mock out of <laughs> actors that you know, can't come close. But I know in mean, cinema, it really doesn't happen. Sometimes in, maybe in other medium, you can shoot very separately in, in, in other medium. In, 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 uh, in films, the way we shoot now in the realistic, in real locations, hardly we shoot in studios now. We need the film format has changed, the look has changed. So it is a very difficult situation to shoot right now. And exhibition is also a very difficult uh, situation. And I think um, uh, the this uh, op open space has to be there for producers to see that how they at least uh, recover the money right now. Because the producers who are investing money have to see if, if they make a venture, they make a production. The They start the film from pre-production. So it takes around one year to complete a film. And there's a huge money which is, has also an uh, interest amount. So we need to see if we can recover maybe 60, 70 percent of that. So it is no challenges and I can, uh, as everybody said, and I'm sure if the entire world will say, cinema has always been challenged and we have been listening it for every eight, 10 years, some new technology is coming and uh, cinema is gone. No, cinema has its own magic and people are going to come to theaters to watch a good cinema. So uh, I think that's that's what I really want to say. Uh, sir, thank you. Thank you so much. I think I and Varun have some homework of kind of taking uh, the thought on the Indian film body. Uh, I may be allowed to reach out to all of you separately to exchange notes and to see how this can be coordinated. And Fidda also, uh, be rest assured, I'm going to disturb you a lot on this. Uh, so, so there was a statement which uh, George Soros actually very interestingly said. In the 20th century, there were two world wars, almost three pandemics, four depressions, five recessions. But the Dow Jones went 1,200 times from 66 to 11,500. So uh, all I can say, yes, there may be a fight ahead, but uh, we, we've had three world wars in the last, two world wars in the last decade, and we've come out stronger. Uh, from this, we move on to a lady who has traversed, performed in the villages of Kerala and also at the Broadway. And somewhere in between, she did 200 films also. Uh, and Dude. everything seems to be connected. Uh, Shobna Ji, over to you. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you, though. I wish the circumstances were very, very different. So let me just tell you, I'm just here as a, a spectator because I'm also very, very confused. I belong to the older set of uh, actors and uh, I haven't actually worked with a lot of digital cinema. I'm so uh, old uh, fashioned. Uh, I just did a film recently after a hiatus of about five years. It was a very clean film um, and the film was a super hit. It just released like uh, a couple of months ago. It's very difficult to make a film without a star and it's still being a hit. Right? Without your typical masala portions, whatever, commercialism. And when I, unfortunately, this happened and the, uh, it is such a, so depressing. Because all the people who, who made the film, they're very young. The director is young. He made his first film. And it is so difficult to make a film a hit, isn't it? 
So just when everything was going so well, the, the theaters were all full. I went from Chennai to Kerala and I saw the film in a theater after a long time. I saw it in the day. It was a full house. It was a weekday. And the thrill that I got out of seeing my own film was just phenomenal. There is nothing to beat the thrill of going to a, a movie house. Now, we all know that we've, films have seen its uh, challenges and everything. But also, it's just not about the magic of the big screen. It's about us actually preparing and going for a film. Socially, as Mr. Pardo said. But that is what is there's a big uh, problem here, isn't it? So nobody knows at this time. I've been speaking to a few of my colleagues uh, in preparation for this uh, meeting. I, all the stars, all those brand names are sitting in their homes so depressed. Everybody's like, we don't know. So I asked them the same questions. I said, do you think you know your films will actually uh, go to the smaller televisions and they said no right now we don't know we don't know anything so right now they said no this is going to be okay the films are going to go out we have to show it in the theaters otherwise we'll all lose a lot of money this is what the really big big actors and producers are hoping and praying at this point of time that their films will still go there so i hope and pray that everything goes away soon it's like a nightmare but there's a i'm here representing another uh, form of entertainment which is a content maker the creator so what i do is i also perform bharatanatyam um so for me now when you talk about there is nobody here now to watch me i usually do performances for about 5000 people live in a classical niche 5000 people 10000 people the beauty of performing live for them is something phenomenal now keeping that aside we are all we are all confused here as a performer i also want to be on an ott everybody wants to be on an ott everybody is going berserk Everybody is making content. Everybody is, you know, cramming the net with their stuff. They're singing, they're dancing, they're doing this. I also want to do it. Everybody is going wild. But I have a problem here because my kind of performance, the beauty of it is it is also spiritual. Now, for me, the challenge of another kind of an entertainment module is not the shooting in my house. That's only content. So if it was just a content, it, it's fine. If it's just dancing, it's okay. But unfortunately, I have to create a rasa. I have to create an ethos, which is spiritual. Now, how do we take that and show it on a small phone? Senbilji, can you just see if you can answer my question? It is so difficult for me. I'm trying to break my head here. I'm saying if it's just dance you want, we can dance. But it's this Abhinaya. How do you create that magic of that, you know, mythology of a dance, which is a relatively a, a, a small, you know, niche market. It's not like your big films. How do you bring it up, bring it on a small phone? And how do you create that that magic? You might need to unmute him, come on. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, no, this is the magic of a live performance where you share your uh, emotions with the audience and you play off the audience's uh, emotions and, uh, and uh, grow from that. And that's what's right. going to be will uh, without that and that's the same magic of a movie theater it's not just uh, being in um, a, having a large screen that makes a difference it's much more than that it's having the audience around you in that dark room where you don't you're a slave to the screen where you can't shut it off you can't pause it for a second 
and where everybody is laughing or crying or uh, angry at whatever is going on on the screen at the same time and those emotions are what make that performance so much more enjoyable and of course there's no forgetting that uh, movie theaters uh, are therefore able to earn more and therefore the economics of movie making are such that doing a theatrical release and then a delayed release in other media is what earns the most money so let's not forget that in the end of the day if there was a way to make more money just by going to home video maybe many more people will do it but the truth is the economics doesn't allow for that this amazing experience cinema screen makes that the best earning medium and that's the medium that also gives the star the star value and therefore the whole ecosystem lives off uh, this tent pole of a cinema and then uh, all of that flows down to the other media so when we talk about different kinds of platforms that's what we're also saying we're saying we have different kinds of platforms uh for me it's not that it can't be done we just have to get more and more creative because in terms of entertainment everybody everything has actually changed the audiences have changed their interests are varied they just don't want to only see like a, either a hollywood film or a bollywood film or your regional film they want to see anything and everything which is interesting so you just don't need only big big films you need to have those various other avenues also and hopefully for me i still have a problem i'm not able to communicate the spirituality in the other kind of an ott platform is what i'm saying sadly that's never yeah you have to do a live performance to have that well that's again what i'm saying i'm not saying it can't be done i'm saying necessity is the mother of invention so i'm trying to you know get myself and create a way so it's also a way of learning so i'm not saying this is not good or i'm not able to create i'm just hoping and praying that this gives me a direction to try and uh, put my art forth in a different way and hope hope that i succeed films are always there to stay huh, by the way of course uh there's someone with us whom we can't see uh saloni sagal ji and and we've all been talking about uh monetization etc etc uh so so there were there, there were two very important things i think which uh we we need to cover uh one is uh santhil ji everything was analog till such time you came with real image and today every second person who watches cinema watches through your technology and uh saloni ji uh, you are probably one of the few people who have their belief in uh investing in interactive entertainment space in india uh, not too many people have that belief so i'll first come to uh senthil sir is it time to reinvent the technology and probably build the maruti and take it far and wide to the smaller time towns to the villages maybe to the houses you've done it once probably you're the most qualified to do it the second time and uh, after that saloni ji uh, what is the new normal in monetizing investing recovering especially in the cinema space right i will leave it to the two of you to uh, who say wants to go first uh saloni ji please uh... yeah you know, uh well, well thank you so much everyone uh, rahul ji firdaus ji shobhna ji rahul ji and prasant ji and santosh ji i apologize for the fact that my video is not working and to all the listeners but i'll try and do as much justice as i can as i can uh through through just speaking um so i i come to the entertainment business uh bringing more new media experience and in digital media gaming interactive entertainment content and you know through through the journey of an investor and operator across venture capital funds startups and and global financial institutions i think what's what's happened uh, for entertainment particularly with coronavirus is that there is this this complete paradigm shift in the kind of entertainment that is now exploding 
in india particularly we're seeing this massive you know acceleration of digital entertainment that would have pro previously taken maybe 5 10 years to come is now coming at this point of time and over the last let's say you know 5 years or so we have we have seen you know the early rise of new age media and digital content ott arrived and traditional entertainment was still powerful then there was the proliferation of user generated content there was youtube there was tiktok there was snapchat but it was still coexisting with traditional entertainment then there was the emergence of the increased relevance of video games but again at that point of time traditional entertainment was still uh, pretty much capturing the eyeballs i think what coronavirus has now done is it has it has flipped the tables so india in the last quarter and in the last couple of months actually has reported almost a 35% increase in data traffic home broadband connections have increased by 150% peak usage hours of people using internet has shifted from you know just a couple of hours a day to now all day every day and and that's that kind of digital acceleration is you know it's those numbers are completely mind boggling because you know while we're hearing all these stories of the doom and the gloom and and not to make light of this very dark situation that we're in at the same time we're seeing this emergence uh an early birth of this new age entertainment which uh which india pro and in and india's on the horizon for that and that's essentially the kind of uh, entertainment trends that you know my i and my firm track and what we like to call it is that entertainment is now evolving from a lean back experience into a lean forward experience and that has come from the rise of interactive content that has come from the rise of gaming and i'll just give you a little bit of context of what that means that now we're seeing engagement and download of gaming apps have accelerated 30 to 40 percent. Last year, and I, and I believe there was 2018 or 2009, Indians downloaded five billion gaming apps. There are games in India which have 50 million daily active users, and and that kind of, you know, it's it those numbers are are mind boggling. And I think what we're seeing in entertainment and our thesis is that we're seeing entertainment being segmented. into various user needs that entertainment is becoming multi context it's becoming multi format and multi platform which is segmented into you know user requirements and which are all wonderfully coexisting you know i agree with what rahul ji was saying that there is a context for ott storytelling and there is a context for cinematic viewing and what we feel is that cinema experiences will be for those showcasing those grandiose spectacles which are enjoyed by your entire family your friends television and ott will be part of your home family joint content you know couples watching television together and then you've got the mobile your tablet or your computer which is now going to be more personalized it's all about intimate screen time so you you have entertainment which is neatly segmented into various user requirements all coexisting and every person is a consumer of of all three like for example all of us would would watch a ott show but we would also watch a video on our phones and at the same time we will go to a cinema for theater so i believe that 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 kind of segmentation is now is now taking place in the market and it's it's perhaps uh, evolved much faster than any of us expected and 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 things are rapidly evolving you know i think i echo the sentiment here about the magic magic of cinema not vanishing even though we will see some short term pain uh, you know and and not just from the aspects of let's say monetization of that theat theatrical releases account for two thirds of a film monetization i have a more fundamental belief that in india there are lack of outdoor spaces and there are not adequate enough options for family leisure so that has to bring back people to cinemas eventually where you know going to the cinema is an experience that you do with your family or with close friends and that experience has to translate back so it's a bit premature to call cause for the demise of the cinema which i know you know there have been some calls and i think that's unduly harsh um but at the same time uh, what what we're seeing is the upstart of this new digital media we're seeing the rise of on demand entertainment where there is need for instant gratification with everyday heroes you know we're seeing the emergence of new age digital superstars who are leveraging phones and transporting watchers into worlds 
through the lens of these small devices, we're seeing these massive digital ce celebrities and influencers come from TikTok, come from Instagram, come from YouTube, who are commanding uh, concurrent views of 200,000, 500,000 people watching them talk about everything from films to games to beauty to leisure, and people are consuming that content. And, and that's, that's an unleashing of mass creativity. You know, that has democratized, democratized entertainment for the masses where there is something essentially for everyone. And of course, I mean, gaming has been a huge beneficiary. We are seeing Indians enjoying multiplayer gaming. They're digital convergence natives. You know, they're embracing these social mechanics. They're embracing voice, they're embracing video, and they're spending money on games. You know, the pre previous thought of how Indians don't spend for products online that mindset has changed. So there's this unlocking of this completely new economy, which, which has been completely unprecedented. So, you know, as while we focus on traditional entertainment as part of this discussion, uh, for me, the future of entertainment, I feel is now ever evolving. Creators are really pushing the limits of storytelling. There are new big shifts coming on the horizon. There's the emergence of mixed reality. There is the rising virtualization of post-production, the proliferation of new content. So I think it's up for us as an industry to understand, evolve and embrace this future. Uh, and at the same time, understanding how the industry and the government can acknowledge these, these changes, recognize these trends and see how, you know, not just traditional entertainment, but digital entertainment can also be supported in the same way. Excellent. I think. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Tony. I have up. a yeah, sorry, Rao, question afterwards. Uh, Senthil, sir, over to you. Uh, with, 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 with your thoughts. Uh, and then, then, please, sir, please, sir, go ahead. As far as movies are concerned, India has been very prolific and it's only been growing year after year. Uh, I was just checking the figures for uh, 2019 and we had. Uh, about 1400 a little over 1400 films made uh, across all indian languages on top of that there were uh, dubs of uh, indian films in from one language to another and on top of that there were uh, hollywood films dubbed into indian languages so it's uh, a market that has still been growing year after year and uh, the uh, box office revenues have been over 2 billion dollars in uh, 2019 um, the thing is that one area where India has been lagging hugely is in the screen density. If you look at, uh, we have about 10,500 screens or a little over that uh, in India today, uh, from a peak of around 12,500, uh, maybe uh, Rahulji, I'm not sure if it, that would have been in the 90s, uh, um, down to this level now. And it had fallen much more uh, and has now climbed back up to 12,500 now but at this level our screen density is below 8 per million people if you take uh, a country like the us it's about 130 screens per million people but the us is certainly over screen so let's not take that example let's go to a country like china that has nearly a 40 screens per million people or uh, australia which has about 70 screens per million people these so clearly india is terribly behind in the number of screens and maybe because our uh, screens are larger with an average of about 500 seats per screen, uh, we are making up some of that in seats, but that's inefficient because we no longer have the kind of films that can bring 1,000 people to uh, one hall, except in maybe uh, uh, 20 or 30 days of a year. So uh, a majority of the year is wasted if we have such large screens. And it's far more efficient to have a, a smaller screen format where uh, the efficiency will be in that it is constantly uh, nearly full and if there is a large film you can always fill it with multiple uh, fill that same uh, movie in multiple uh, screens uh, but what covid has done is show us that uh, the malls are uh, threatened not just by e-commerce but by other things that can derail them completely and uh, in any case the real estate cost of malls was until now very high and maybe now with the dropping demand and the realization of work from home uh, commercial real estate will drop in price and we will slowly see uh, malls also becoming more realistic in their uh, value but 
the far bigger opportunity is for cinema to expand in uh, rural india we uh, discussed this uh, rahul ji also mentioned that even kujrao Kuch, uh, doesn't have uh, a screen nearby i think there are many many uh, towns that need uh, additional screens nearby and we need to build on that very quickly uh, we saw a recent phenomena where uh, uh, we had partnered with uv creations to build uh, uh, three screen complex in uh, solur pet which is near uh, sri harikota the rocket launch pad and sri city which is a industrial hub that whole area which has such a large number of families living across different income groups didn't have a single screen and when this little complex came up uh, occupancy was upward of 95 percent for most of the large films that opened there uh, so clearly uh, more and more greenfield sites in a much smaller form factor are the need of the hour going forward after this uh, crisis and that's a way that uh, much more of india can get to see first day first shows and enjoy themselves with a true movie experience Uh, th thank you so much, Santilji. Uh, Salonji, I was very tempted to take this question with you, uh, if you, if you, sure. so obliged. Seventy-five crore people in India get into the middle class. None of them has seen a cinema hall in their own in their whole lives. And if there were companies willing to put in a hundred, two fifty, five hundred screen for the track in a smaller model. Would that interest, if not excite, the investment fraternity? I think, you know, going back and uh, to consolidate all the, you know, feedback and the information that we've just received from this panel and, you know, the, the experts who are here, there is definitely, I think there are two elements to it. One is the short term impact that would, uh, that could give the investment community some pause and then the long-term potential for it. So, I'll, you know, let me address the long-term potential. In the long-term potential is I'm a long-term net positive believer that cinema will be still a part of our life um, because it is a very viable route of entertainment for all of us, not just us as city goers, but also people in, you know, smaller, smaller urban areas to rural areas as well. It's often a very key entertainment uh, source, of, source of avenue of entertainment. Um, and because that India is a screen deficient country, makes it a very compelling uh, proposition. In the short term, there are obviously the health and safety concerns uh, of, of what it means to have a cinema going experience, given that there needs to be social distancing, there needs to be a certain amount of, uh, of facilities that need to be certain, maintained a certain way, you know, that disinfection, disinfectants, et cetera, that need to be maintained. So that's the short term implication of it. What I do believe that then within the short term, it's a great time to build and to build, to capitalize on the fact is a, what kind of a cinemas would they be? Would they be low cost, uh, you know, small theater spaces, which you just suggested? Uh, what would it mean in terms of their distribution capability to be able to get the right deals? What kind of cinema would they be able to demonstrate? How would they utilize spare capacity in the in the in the uh, opportunity when there is no when there are no movies? So I think those are the kind of questions as an investor I would be very keen to try and understand. But I believe that long term there is still this massive potential of entertaining the masses through the medium of cinema by low cost cinema viewing. Uh Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, the, the, the panel is much uh, wiser, much more august. Uh, anything which you would like to ask each other, well, speak to each other. I have some homework which I will definitely take. Uh, Jadus as a company believes in the rural space and and i often i've been reaching out to Senthil and saying that uh, i would do a pilot of 50 sites each site addressing 20 villages good old days open air theater low cost first day first show good white screen 2k projector awesome sound uh, if the pilot works it can be scaled to 10,000 
such open air screens some may be closed but that's that's our story uh, i i think i i cannot from my side thank all of you enough thank SOCHM enough uh, the audience has a few questions which we've requested them to write by email mm. uh, what I can take back is something which Jackson Brown said uh, which kind of applies today that perseverance has to be our engine and hope has to be the fuel uh, so any any not any. So some last words, Prasenjit sir from you, Rahul sir from you, Pridos, Sab. You, you've got to end it with some hope, some last words. Yeah, please I think do. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally depressed. <laughs> yeah. That's an area that I think we all need to join together and uh, work to change, which is that we need to, uh, now that OTT is spread so much and uh, uh, there's YouTube and TikTok and everything else. We need to get cinema on a level playing field. It's sad to say that this medium is uh, impeded by something as primitive as uh, censorship and I won't call it certification because that's not what it is in India. We all need to work together to change that and get it to a level playing field. It can be a voluntary certification that we do to our movies so that parents can control what their children watch. But other than that, there is no reason in 2020 to have uh, the government uh, decide what we can and cannot watch. And it's a panel of very subjective people who often make sometimes ridiculous decisions, which we all protest against, and then it's overturned by the courts. It's time again and again, uh, taking away from the ease of doing business. And I think uh, uh, the Modi ji and the current government is very keen on <clears throat> removing the impediments to doing business and this should be something that they will uh, they can be convinced to support well central i think this is uh, something that uh, i on my own and lots of other people we've been talking to the information ministry and also the directive to the minister of information broadcasting for the last two three years but uh, this is a different subject completely you know, we don't know when it's going to happen, though lots of people are asking for this. So uh, I, I, I really don't know when this is going to happen, if it happens at all or not. But I would agree with you that, yes, it would definitely be a better thing if we can uh, get over censorship, which in today's time is quite redundant to have censorship anymore. But it's there, so we've got to live with it. One more thing, Sanjil, uh, is I do not agree in one thing that cinema is not is something which should not stay. Cinema and the magic of cinema will stay forever, if you ask me. The magic of seeing a film on, I, I agree, I'm all for it for having uh, smaller uh, screens, in smaller places, but the experience of watching a film on a large format, I think, is something where people are going to stay and it is going to happen. There are a lot of films, I think, which when they move from this uh, film experience to the OTTs, they do suffer a lot. Uh, recently, this is a personal opinion. I may be wrong. <clears throat> we all watch films <clears throat> uh, with our own personal experiences. I'm talking about uh, Evacuation, which was just released on the OTT on Netflix, whereas it was made for the film. And uh, my personal view on seeing uh, Evacuation was that the grandeur Fashion. one would expect the way it being made is not there. Experience in Northern Oak. So I'm coming back to what I've been saying, Central, that we need to make our content, all right? We are talking about content producers. Prasenji spoke very rightly about content producers. Also, Prasenji spoke very rightly about, you know, the whole Indian film industry being looked on it together, not as 
regional bits. But we need to really focus on what is the final delivery format which we are working on. Is it big speed? Is it OTT? Is it satellite? Or is it the mobile phone? You know, now for the mobile phone, you also have the vertical. Uh, I'm sure you know about it. You're very adept at uh, technology central. So the vertical format is again something new. I watched uh, some of it at Khan's. And, um, you know, I think that, that that's a great format, but it's restricted to your mobile. You know, the delivery platform is what is going to dictate as to the kind of film you take and how you project it. So that's what my feeling is. Works. Uh, yeah, if you could, uh, if you could uh, summarize, uh, where would we be sitting in December? Uh, in a hall or still halfway through the hall? Uh, uh, that that would be that would be awesome for the people who are watching. And uh, I think this session is more to get energy uh, to yeah. please, sir. Well, I'm very hopeful and uh, we all are praying. We all are sitting here. We as a uh, part of this industry, we all are hoping and we all are praying uh, that uh, the audience should come back very soon to the theaters. And for me, honestly speaking, for me, uh, theater, cinema hall or theater, is my for me it is my mandir i always believe you know that that's my final destination for an actor so we always believe that when a theater gets a house full it's like a mandir to us so i'm sure uh, there are a lot of other businesses which is getting suffered there are problems there are certain things which we also need to identify we need to make a plan but i'm very sure very soon the cinema hall magic will start and theaters people will come to the theaters and watch our film indian cinema world cinema so i think uh, we just need to have patience and again again and last i need to really say to this industry as an original it's not an original industry i'm talking about indian cinema i think the platform has to be there one guideline has to be there for all all the people from the cinema industry there has to be a guideline which we all need to you know follow otherwise what is happening honestly speaking because india is it says india but we have a lot of regional industry a lot of different industry every industry has their own body way thing so we are getting a little scattered we are getting a little confused if we can have one very solid senior people of, of the different industry comes together and you know represent us and comes out to a solution which can be shooting it can be exhibition it can be everything so we all are sorted with a, a right direction but we will surely come to the theater very soon Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Firdaus, uh, your closing remarks. Yeah, my closing remark will be, uh, I agree most of the thing what uh, Mr. Ravel ji said and uh, Bumba, the President said, that the magic uh, magic of a movie, magic of a cinema, uh, you know, uh, producer, director, uh, also the actor, we, we, we believe the verdict of the film should come from the audience and that too from the hall. We wait for that. What is the reaction of the? Uh, I made a. I we made a film, and whether it is good or bad, only that can be. The satisfaction comes when we release in the hall. See, if we make a film and give it to uh, OTT platform, it's more or less like a job work. We made a film for them and we sold it. We don't know how the audience like it or not. No, we don't get any reaction. So our place, we are a filmmaker. Our place is theater. We love to be there. We love to see our theater coming back. We love to see that houseful board uh, written there. 
and and uh, the magic of the cinema i have al al already mentioned it before that in our industry 90% of our films doesn't fail in the box office 95 to 90, 90 to 95 percent of films still the industry is growing every day that is the beauty of film uh, so thank you so much uh i just like to share one, one very one, interesting one, one, more, one more one more thing i want to add as uh Mumbada and uh rahul was rahul da was Mr. rahul Ravel was saying uh, about a body and you all know the film federation of india is already there uh, we are we are considered as the epic body of the film industry. Uh, all the constituent, all all the big uh, from all region, Bengal, Maharashtra, and South India, they are all. We have at, at around 25 to 30 bodies which are under us, and we represent the producers. We have a producer section, distributor section, and exhibitor section, and uh, we have been uh, acting as a bridge between the industry and the government. And we after this uh, after this. Uh, uh, pandemic we had a series of meeting and we had a gc meeting also and uh, we have put a lot of uh, pressure we are putting a lot of pressure to the government uh, we are raising the issues uh, uh, also with the state government and with the central government as you know that uh, some, some subjects are with the state and some with the central government so we are fighting for this and and what i said that everyone uh, we need everyone's support uh, we are there we are there for the film industry uh, we will go all out for the film industry to restart the main the main challenge with us to restart the film industry uh, the shootings we have to restart the shooting the post production the pre production and at the last we have to restart the cinema hall uh, not only restart the cinema hall we have to see that audience comes back the big challenge we have so we are ready to take the challenge we are already working on it and we need everyone's support uh, and everyone in the industry should speak in one voice Uh, thank you so much, sirs. Uh, I can I cannot thank SHM, FFI, and and uh, all of you for taking time out Monday busy day, first day of the week. Sure, we're all really busy now. Varun, <laughs> uh, yeah. we haven't seen you. Thanks to you, Saloni, ma'am. Uh, we missed you visually this time, but uh, I'm sure there's going to be a second time. Thank you. Uh, I, I personally have got a lot of energy. Uh, thanks to COVID, I see everyone thinking. Everyone out with their uh, shoes tied, trying to solve a problem. And I, I see only energy, to be honest with you. Uh, thank you once again. Thanks to the audience uh, whom we can't see for being with us. Have a very good evening. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Best of luck, Firdos ji. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, best Bye. of luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Lovely to see, see you. you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.